I was born in the, the city on the west coast of Norway. The oil industry was then booming, and I left to study architecture. When I came back after 10 years, there was a shift. I started to work then with my partner, and the last concrete platform was dragged out into the North Sea. But what was even more striking was that scrap was starting to come back into the city again. We were amazed by this, and it somehow changed the way we were thinking about architecture. We wondered how could this creative re- and destruction, the remarkable flow of materials, gas and oil and capital, not be visible in the city. This was all very well integrated behind very general office facades. So we asked ourselves, how could we integrate resources from this polluted industry into a more sustainable architecture and urban development? How could we recycle and transfer this material household and advanced technology um, and make a new architecture? And even more, how could we express these resources in the, the public domain? So what we did is to walk the land of the industry. We visited the headquarters of the oil company, the scrapyards, the huge storage spaces outside the city, and we were investigating with more and more enthusiasm, because what we found is structures with potential for space and for structure, um, methods to produce, which is very interesting, and even more, they have playful colors and they look um, amazing. We just had to reorganize them a little bit. So this is a park for young people. It's made by or together with young people, and it's placed outside the Norwegian Petroleum Museum in Stavanger. And what you see here is, are all elements either given to us by or from discarded uh, oil platforms. We have bought the scrap cheap and placed it into the park, or we have borrowed elements like this uh, yellow template cover, uh, which serves as a coffee and a temporary exhibition space. The deal is that when someone needs it in the North Sea, they can come and take it back out again. <laughs> the whole topography of the park is a model of a huge oil field in the North Sea, where the sedimentary layers are programmed with different activities, like uh, outdoor stage covered by huge buoys, and there is anchors and drilling equipment that you can skate on. For adults, this might still look as serious industrial storage, but for the children, it's a toy or a new landscape to discover. The park was an amazing success, and we think that um, ordinary people got the kind of awareness about what can recycling be. And for us, as architects, it also gave us a new awareness, namely how the enormous potential of, of a creative way of going along with the resources that we have at hand is. By sensing and interacting directly with them, it's maybe where we have a clue to integrate um, sustainability in everyday praxis. So then we asked ourselves, um, how can this awareness be applied in more conventional building? This is a library in the south of Norway, uh, it's a combined library and cultural center. And we asked ourselves, what are the resources at hand in here or around this um, project? And what are the design demands that will be there in the very end anyway? Like air conditioning, sprinkling, signs, lighting, furniture, shelves, of course. And how could we start to work with these ingredients in the very beginning of the project, and then finding synergies between them, combining in them in a new way, and using the potential of them so that they could serve the whole of the library. There was another very evident resource to this project, and that was timber, because the municipality have the greatest forest industry in Norway, and also a timber production, which they are very proud of. So the choice of material was very uh, evident somehow. And so we could use it uh, not only for the interior, but also for the big load-bearing structure spanning over the, 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 the central space. And it's even also used for the exterior cladding of the building.
There's also two existing buildings uh, included into this project. It's a um, school and a cinema. And we um, transformed them so that they could be integrated and connected to this new space, which is, in fact, also um, a continuation of the main square. So what you see on the left side is the cinema recycled into the building of the library, reflecting on how we use these resources in the library, especially the timber. We have spent, or there is spent, a lot of energy and time first to make standardized timber components that then we have shaped into a complex form afterwards. Nature would never design in that way. So you could say that we are bending nature into our design in, in this case. But we have also tried or explored how we could submit more to nature, or how we could add a uh, creative dialogue with the environment. Like in these base camps for children, we asked what is nature giving us as a potential? Where to build, what to build onto, into, with, uh, like this shelf in the rock, or these very high tree stems. And a tree is not a tree. It can be an infinite lots of things if you look at it. It can be a building, a road, or it can even be a beginning of a, a boat construction. This is a picture from the 16th century, so showing how boat builders pick out pieces from the trees to construct a boat. And it's a very precise way of going along with natural resources. So when we were going to make a plane installation in the Victorian Albert Museum, we thought, how could we recycle this ancient knowledge by using new digital technology. We went into the wood and we selected five ash trees that we cut into halves and then we scanned them so that they could be worked on in a virtual format and we could explore it, the interior of the trees and find out how to make climbing grips, um, seats to sit on, and surfaces to read, and stories to tell. Then there was a robot program to mill out the interior play space. This is how it looked in the end, and all the pieces of the trees, the trunk, the bark, the wood chippings, the, the branches and the roots, are refined and reassembled into a new hole. Somehow this was a very successful experiment, we think. But it challenges the whole way that we are um, working as designers. Because normally we have an idea and then we try to realize it by finding out how to impose it into the world, how to which material and where to build it and how to build it. But here we are starting with the very end result. The end material is giving and informing the design. How we go along with timber today, it's very much against the grain. But it doesn't have to be like that, because we have the technology. We could, in fact, digitalize the whole story. We could use the proper qualities of each tree in a very effective way. And think about how you were playing as a child, and there was no difference between the play and the space you were creating. There was just this very continuous integration of the different resources you had at hand. And we think this is a mode of being that has a clue to sustainability. And it's how we would like to make architecture in the future. Thank you very much.